there are demons in the house of Arambash. Yes, today we are doing a really fun story here in the Conan chronologies. We are doing Man Eaters of Zambula, or Shadows in Zambula. Now, this was um, originally released in Weird Tales in the November 1935 issue. It was the cover story. Why was it the cover story? Well, I'll tell you. It's because there is um, a beautiful naked chick in the entire story. She's naked from chapter two to the almost the end of chapter four. Um, so, um, Back in the 30s, before there was a lot of censorship, um, you could put naked ladies on the cover of the magazines that you sell in pharmacies so and newsstands. So that was cool. Um, and again, we have a beautiful um, Margaret Brundridge painting. Brundridge um, here. But okay, so this story. Oh my gosh. So... The first plus for this is that Conan's in it right away. I, I hate those stories that, like, you go, like, a whole chapter and a half before you even introduce Conan. No, dude. Like, Conan's here. So, basically, Conan's chilling at um, some bizarre kind of thing. And it's getting night. He's in Zambula. And, um... Like, one of the, like, dudes in the bazaars, like, like, um, oh, there are demons in the house of Haram Bash, and you shouldn't stay there, because that's where Conan's staying. Because Conan <laughs> didn't have a lot of money, and he was going to go gamble and drink, and he knew that he's not, I guess, not a very good gambler. And knew he was going to lose all of his money, so went and got a room before his night of debauchery. Um, because, you know. But also because beggars and, like, people of that sort don't sleep on the streets of Zambubla. And he doesn't know why. Um, he just attributes it to um, there being, like, some very like, cutthroat robbers in Zambula, so it's not a very safe place to sleep. Um, so he wanted to make sure he had the roof over his head, um, and so, whatever, that's fine. Now, he goes to his room, and they, like, deadbolt the door behind him, and he's like, oh, okay. So he's basically in this, like, really beautifully furnished trap. And he sees that there's a side door, and he can open that. And he looks out, and it opens out into a courtyard with a gate that's not locked. And he's like, uh, oh, okay, well, you know, I'm going to sleep with my sword by my side. You know, nobody's the wise or whatever. So he sees this shadow figure come in to his room. He like opens his eyes like and he sees this dude coming in. Like all slow and he's got a cudgel. And Conan just picks up his sword and slices the dude in half. And he turns on the light and he lights his little lamp. And um, at first Conan thought it was maybe like some kind of demon thing because the head was all weird in the silhouette. But it was because um, it was one of the, well, it's one of the Defari cannibals. But Conan doesn't really know that yet. But so the dude's hair is all big, and then he, like, ties, like, sticks and shit in it to give himself, like, a more terrifying appearance. And um, Conan lifts his lips up, and all his teeth are filed down into points. And um, Conan's like, ah, well, that's fucking weird. So he 
he's pissed off at Aaron Bosch um, because he feels like he was set in a trap, which he was. But he goes outside and he hears this chick screaming. And so he chases it towards the screaming voice. And he sees this beautiful naked chick being dragged through a, um, the sandy desert streets of Zambula by these three Jafari dudes. So, like you do, he just runs in, chops one in half, chops the other one's head off, and then the third one starts running away and he chases him down, knife through the back, up through the chest. And, um... <laughs> This is probably one of the, like, funniest Kodan conversations ever. <clears throat> so this naked chick, like, runs into his arms, and he's like, score? Like, okay. And um, he's like, why are these guys after you? And she's like, well, you see, <laughs> dot, 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 my lover was driven mad by a potion from the... Um, high priest uh, to Trasmac and um, Conan's like um, well beauty like yours might drive a man mad I don't know why my Conan voice sounds like that right now but it does um, and she's like no 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 the priest he wants me for my for himself and no need to curse him for that the hyena has better taste than I thought and um, this is a horrible Conan voice. Jesus Christ. Um, so it's just funny. And then she's like, um, you got to help me um, find my lover. Like, he's um, got a promising future in the military. And if he's found in the streets foaming at the mouth and acting like a lunatic, you know, they'll kill him or whatever. Um, and he's like, what makes you think I want to look for a lunatic? And then she like looks at him and she's like, really? And he's like, shit. <laughs> um, and he's like, okay, well, I'll help you, but name your price. And she's like looking at him and he's like, name your price. And um, without naming it, they both knew what the price was. Okay? <laughs> so stupid. Alright, so, um, so Conan is basically gonna help this chick out because she's gonna um, bump uglies with him. <clears throat> so, they don't even have to look that long. They're, they, like, turn a corner and he's, like, there with a sword like, all, like, foaming at the mouth and shit. And she's like, oh my gosh, don't kill him. Just, she's like, you're really strong, so just like subdue him. And he's like, we'll see. And um, the dude runs at him and Conan, like they parry their blades. And then he just like punches him in the face and the dude drops. And um, he's like, okay, I'm going to tie him up with his uh, sword belt. And hopefully, you know, when he wakes up, he'll be okay. And then, so he ties him up, and she's like, look out, look out, oh, oh. And so she starts, like, checking his body and all this stuff. And she's like, okay. And he's like, where to? And she's like, take him to my my house. And my servants will watch over him. And so um, there's another black slave that works for this girl whose name is Zabibi, and she's a dancer. Um, and at first Conan's like, oh shit, because, um, for some reason, like every time he runs into one of the Defar guys, they're like about to kill somebody. But this guy's hair is cropped short and his teeth aren't filed to points and Conan's like, oh, okay, I guess you're all right. And so Conan hands him the dude. So they have this conversation about, and I think this happened actually before this, but like what's going on in Zambula. And so there is um, a tribe, well, the Defar, or the Defari, they worship the god Yog, 
and it's a cannibalistic religion. And as long as the Dafari cannibals don't um, eat people of the village, um, the higher ups don't care if they do this because if they say you guys can't do this because they're slaves of like all of the wealthy elite in Zambula, they fear that the Defari will revolt and have like a little civil war um, against the wealthy and the small Zambulan military. So as long as they <clears throat> um, eat people of no substance, I guess, like social standing, and as long as they eat um, strangers or travelers, um, Zambula doesn't care. So Aram Bosch, running the hotel, they have a deal with him that they will pay him handsomely if he delivers them um, someone for them to eat. And then on the outskirts of town, they have this big fire pit um, where they, um, I guess, offer up the sacrifice. Because, like, th I guess they cook them, but, like, I don't know if you have to cook them if you're a cannibal. Maybe you do. Maybe I'm just being silly. Um, but anyway, so they have, like, their big ritual on the outskirts of town. So that's why none of the beggars sleep in the streets and all that other shit, because if they do, they're going to get eaten. So now Conan's all up to speed and shit. And so, like, he's like, okay, like, what what's going on? And um, Zabibi's like, um, you need to kill um, Terasmic now. Like, and he's like, and put my head in a noose. No, put my head in a Turanian noose. Um, I don't know. Now he's like East Coast. Like, I don't get it. I don't understand what's going on. I don't want to talk like this the whole time. But, um, yeah, whatever. So, um, he's like, okay, so again, like, what's your price? Like, what am I going to get? And, um, this part's so silly. It's like, He's like, Conan understood then that um, he was going to get this lady no matter how much she's in love with this crazy dude who's tied up right now because um, women are more practical that way. They, 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 could, they could separate their emotions. They could love somebody and then um, sell themselves um, because they're more practical. Um, so that's probably some awesome misogynistic 1930s thinking for you there. Um, but anyway, so they decide they're going to go um, to the Temple of Hanuman, which is awesome that we ha have another um, religion in here that um, is like one of the odd, because like Zabibi and her lover, they're worshippers of Set, and um, which is like probably the most famous um, god. He's the snake god um, in the Conan lore. But um, in the Conan Exiles game, when you're down at like Noob River, um, there's like Hanuman's Grotto. And, um, there is, like, the statue of the, um, it's kind of like an ape, but, um, it isn't. And in the game, I think they, they have the imps <clears throat> worshipping Hanuman, and, um, so it's almost like... In the game, it's a little bit different, and they go into more detail with it. But it's like a, like a mutation 
um, a human mutation. But anyway, so just having that in here is really cool on top of it. So I like that. But, um, so they get in there, she's trying to find some secret passage, and then all of a sudden the door opens, and this happens in so many fucking Conan stories, it's gonna happen in the next Conan story. A wall opens, and a hand comes out and grabs, uh, Zabidi, and, like, yanks her in, and then the wall shuts, and Conan's like, oh, and he's, like, like, banging on the wall, and he could, like, hear her screaming in the background, so that's pretty epic. So then, like, he goes up to this other door and opens it, and it opens, and he touches the latch on the lock, and it's still warm, so he knows it was just open. Um, and he goes in, and he finds this big, big motherfucker, like, just chilling in a loincloth with giant fucking hands. And this is um, Balpator. Um and that's his new name, and he says it like that, and it's kind of weird that you're like, oh, you didn't know who the fuck you were before, so what does it matter? Um, but, like, he throws this orb at Conan, and um, Conan ducks, but it just, like, kind of floats in the air, and then starts spinning and creating, like, this giant, like, vortex that's, like, trying to suck him in. And he, like, pulls back and pulls back. And then all of a sudden, he's in a meadow, and a buffalo's charging him. And he chops the buffalo's head off. And then he looks down at the head, and it's not a buffalo head. It's Bob Tor. And um, it has giant tusks, and it jumps up and bites his throat. And he's like, oh, I can't get it off, I can't get it off. And then all of a sudden, he's still in the other room. And it's like, um, and he's like, mysticism or mesmerism like whatever the fuck he says and he's like oh um and then he sees like this giant like puma or panther on a table and he's like oh i should probably kill that and he swings his sword and it hits the table and then he tries to lift the sword up and he can't lift it up and he realizes that the table's just a magnet it's just this big giant magnet and so now the conan doesn't have the sword um, Bob Tor comes up and he's like, he's like, listen, I'm the strangler of some fucking place. And, um, from the day I was born, I was trained to kill people with my hands. When I was a kid, they would give me babies. And then when I was a teenager, they would give me young girls or the elderly. And it wasn't until I was a man that I could just go out and start killing men and ripping their heads off like a chicken. And, um, so now I'm going to, like, break your neck. And he, like, just grabs Conan's neck. And Conan doesn't move. He just lets him do it. And then Conan fucking grabs his neck and starts squeezing. And Bob Tor's eyes start getting really big. He's like, what the fuck? And he feels like the, the iron cord to muscle protecting Conan's throat. And so, like, they're just standing there squeezing the shit out of each other's throat, trying to, like, snap each other's necks and shit. Um, and then finally, Balpator, like, has to let go and try to grab Conan's hands off his throat. And Conan, like, pushes him over a tape, the magnet table, like, almost ready to snap his back. And he's like, did you really think you being able to rip the heads off of civilized folk is even anything remotely like, at the same level compared to where I'm from and what I had to do. I had to rip the heads off of, like, buffaloes when I was, like, before I was a man. And then he's just, like, crank and breaks his neck. So that was just so badass because this guy shows up. It almost has the same feel in that part of Indiana Jones. Or was it Raiders of the Lost Ark? Raiders of the Lost Ark, where the guy's, like, coming out swinging the sword. And Indiana Jones is just, like... <sighs> And just shoots the dude. Like, this guy comes out and gives him his fucking resume on how he fucking kills people. And Conan's like, okay. Like, and to the reader, we're like, oh, that's pretty badass. And Conan's like, no, that's actually quite fucking shit. I could, I could handle this. So then, um, Conan, like, rips his sword off the magnet. And he goes down this hallway and he hears this horrible music. And he hears whimpering. And he just follows it. And so now we cut to the worst name of a chapter 
in any Robert E. Howard story ever. Dance, girl, dance. Um, and this is where we get all sorts of information. And, and the thing that's crazy about this, so much stuff happens in this, and it's four chapters. And it's, I think maybe it's 11,000 words. I'm, I could be wrong on that, but it's not a very long story. And so much is happening. So she is in the room with um, Terasmic. And um, he's like, oh, back so soon? And um, she's like, I'm not here because I like you and I want to be here. I'm here because you screwed me over. And he's like, how so? And she's like, I asked you for a potion that would just put my lover to sleep. And you gave me a potion that drove him mad. And so you're like, as a reader, you're like, wait a second the fuck's going on here and then she's like um and he's like why did you want to put him to sleep because you wanted to steal the star of Corelia and have it all for your own um and apparently there's this ring called the star of Corelia that um the queen of Ophir had and the, it make it's like a magical ring that the wearer can make any one of the opposite sex like fall in love with them and do whatever they want. And um, her lover had this ring and wouldn't give it to her. And so she was going to try to steal it from him. And so she went to this high priest to try to strike a deal. And um, he's just like, okay, well, I have this um, golden lotus potion if you want him to not be crazy anymore just come get it and so she goes to get it and then these pillars fall in the four corners around her and she's like oh and, and she's still naked okay now these pillars have cobras in them that are like going for her and so he puts on this music and she's like having to like dance her way from not getting bit by these venomous vipers. And he's like, dance, girl, dance. Ugh. And um, so she's like, do, 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 and trying to not get bit. She's getting really tired. She can't jump through because they'll get her if she does. So she's just like dancing. And he's like, ha, ha, ha. And then all of a sudden, sword comes through his chest. And he's like, ugh. And, um, Conan looks and he notices that he's seen Zabibi dance in front of these just four little pillars of smoke. And he's like, but she probably sees something much different because he just saw a bunch of weird shit too. So she runs to the um, dead priest and grabs the potion and then starts searching him for something. And then starts, like, tearing up the whole, like, room. Like, taking pictures down, ripping cushions, trying to find this thing. And Conan's like, what are you doing, you crazy lady? And so they go and um, put the shit in the dude's mouth. Her lover. And um, he's okay. And, it, like, he stops acting like a lunatic, but he's, like, asleep. And then she's like, okay, well, let me get this bag of gold and put on this, like, more gallant robe. And she's like, okay, look, I'm not really Zabibi. I'm actually um, Nefetari, the mistress of the ruler of Zambula, who is Jankir Khan, the guy who's, like, going crazy. And we had to keep it a secret from everyone, because if anyone knew that he had lost his mind, um, the people would have revolted. And, or there would have been a revolt. And um, so I, I obviously can't sleep with you, but here's like a giant bag of gold. And tomorrow um, you're going to be the head of my guard and you're going to go in to um, Terasmic's uh, place and search for the star of Corellia. And um, he doesn't say anything. And then he just, and she like basically just like, okay, um, that is all. And so he turns around and he walks away 
and then like he doesn't even give a shit and um it, it's kind of weird and then he like runs back over to our boshes and he sees three of the Defari cannibals like walking around all sad. And he's like, where are you guys going? And they're like, well, we're going to tell um, our brothers to put the fire out because there will be um, no meat for us to eat tonight. Um, and then one of them's like, Aaron Bosch promised us a man, but um, he lied. And then Conan's like all pissed off and he's like, Aaron Bosch will give you a man. And they're like, huh? And he's like, Arambash will give you a man. And he's like, go wait by that door. And so he goes in and he like bangs on Arambash's chamber's door, chamber door. Um, and he's like, the cannibals are scaling the wall. And so Arambash comes out like he's like in like boxers and a stained wife meter, let's say. And he has like a little dagger and he's just this like fat like oafish dude with this big long beard and so conan jumps out and he's like you and conan grabs him and gets him on the floor and takes the dude's dagger and like rips his beard off and then takes the dude's tongue out and cuts his tongue out okay so now he's like covered in blood um he can't talk and he looks completely different and then he goes to the door and he pushes Aaron Bosch through the door right to the cannibals. And then they beat the shit out of him with their cudgels. And um, he's like, <laughs> and they take him to the fire pits. And Conan gets on his horse and starts sleeping because now he feels like, you know, I did good. Like, you've killed so many people. And now you got yours, motherfucker. And so he opens his bag and he pulls out the Star of Crew. Because he had it because it was on the um, the crazy lover's hand when they fought. But when he tied his hands up, he took the ring off. And um, he knew what it was. And he knew that she was um, Nefertari. And he, that he was um, Jagir Khan, like, right when he saw him. So he's, like, going to um, try to sell the ring back to the Queen of Ophir. <clears throat> or to the highest bidder. And he's like, if they knew that I already knew that I took this ring, like, I'd be a dead man, but um, I'm going to have such a huge head, head start, they'll never figure it out. And that's how the story ends. And it's so crazy, because most of these, like, middle story, middle era Conan stories end with him going like, come on, lady, let's go back to my place and that's how the story's in but this one he's like huh, screw it like i'm like a rich motherfucker right now <clears throat> so anyway so the racism here um and i don't mean to like put it in quotes like it's just there is this area and in this area um there are people with black slaves and not all the slaves are from Darfar, where they have, where they worship Yog, but some of them are. And so, like, there's this, like, hierarchy of blacks being slaves, but then also in, within the blacks, because they're from different places and not of the same culture, they have their own hierarchy in there. So, um, a lot of people don't like this story because of that. But then other people are like, but, um, you know, he's trying to say that, like, not all of the blacks are bad because um, some of them are okay and all this stuff. And then that just sounds weird because it's like, yeah, but they're all slaves. Like, it's not like um, some of them some people have black slaves and some people have white slaves. It's like all the slaves are black. So, um, but again, this is like a prehistory story and it's just, it's really, I mean, like no one is freaking out that like people are eating people. Okay. Like that, that's probably a big problem, 
No one's freaking out that people are slicing people in half with swords. That's also a big problem. Um, nobody's freaking out that um, there are sorcerers who could do really fucked up shit. That's a really big problem, too. So there's all these problems, um, but because of modern sensibilities and stuff like that, reading a story like this sometimes um, rubs people the wrong way, and I totally understand. And there's even um, some lines in this that I wish he didn't use. But again, this was written fucking 90 years ago almost. So... Um, it's hard to, like, wag your finger at somebody fr from for a story for so long ago. But th there is some language, and it's not even the language. I think it's, like, the tone of how it's used I really don't like. Um, but other than that, this is just one of the funnest stories. And I think the Defari cannibals are the coolest group of fucking people in any fucking Conan story. They're fucking badass. Like, ah, oh, I love it. And I fucking think Yogg is like one of the coolest gods in Hyboria. And yes, a lot of that has to do with um, the Conan Exiles game and all that other stuff. But I just, I love it. I think it's so much fun. Um, like, if I had to pick which, like, group I would be a part of. I would be a part of the Defari Cannibals hands fucking down, dude. Um, they're just badass. But anyway, um, and loincloths, hello. Um, but yeah, so anyway, um, that is uh, Maneaters of Zambula. It's a fun-ass story. And then next time, we are going to read my absolute favorite Conan story, absolute favorite and i'm going to try to put it up today so i don't forget um but we're reading um zuthal of the dusk is that what it's called or the slithering shadow i don't like the slithering shadow i like zuthal of dusk zuthal um so yeah so this is like my favorite conan story um Kind of because we have like a weird love triangle. We have um, weird like science that um, no one else in um, Hyboria has. We have a crazy demon and we have some like kind of hot girl on girl BDSM action. Um, it's funny because when I first read this story, I never looked at it as hot girl on girl BDSM action, but I was reading this. Oh my gosh. It's so weird. She just sent me an email. I haven't spoken to her in months. That's so funny. But a friend of mine, when I was reading this with her, she's like, okay, so that had some like really hot girl on girl BDSM action. And I'm like, Okay, well, if you say it like that, yeah, this sounds really raunchy and dirty. But anyway, so if you're into that kind of shit, you're going to love this next story. Um, <clears throat> it just introduces a lot of really cool things. So much so that when we get to the Devil in Iron, um, Conan, like, thinks back to his time in Zuthal and remembers certain things about it. So um, it was even really big in Robert E. Howard's mind, the fact that he had to, like, throw back to it. So, anyway, super excited about that. Tomorrow, we have um, uh, Shadow over Innsmouth. There's shadows everywhere here, guys. Ugh, so tacky. Okay, but um, this is an amazing H.P. Lovecraft story, so I'm really excited about that. Make sure on uh, Sunday you're... Um, going to be at my live stream for the launch of Fingering the Mundane. It's going to be a lot of fun doing giveaways and all sorts of fun stuff. So that's on Sunday. And um, yeah, check out my Patreon. Check out the Indiegogo. All the links are down below. Um, my Etsy links and all that other stuff. Type hard, everybody. 
and um, we will see you later.